What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of the Narcissist Code. I am your favorite self-aware narcissist, Mr. Lee Hammock, a.k.a. Mental Illness from TikTok, Mental Illness from Instagram, Mental Illness from Twitter, a little bit more tweet. I'm tweeting a little bit a little bit more, y'all. Y'all got to give me credit for trying. Um, if this is your first time tuning in, I am a diagnosed narcissist. I, am, I have narcissistic personality disorder. I've been in therapy, psychotherapy, psychotherapy, psychotherapy. I'm not a psychopath. Just been in psychotherapy for the last, uh, since October of 2017. The point of this page, the point of all my platforms is to bring awareness to other, to mental, mental health issues, mental health disorders, mental illness issues, to get more people into therapy because it has changed my life. And in the process, to validate victims and survivors of narcissistic abuse and other, you know, close to be disorders and things like that. Today's episode is going to be about the narcissistic discard that no one no that no one really ever talks about. And in this, you know, if you if you don't if you if you're not well versed on a narcissistic discard, is when a narcissist devalues you to the point and then they get rid of you. They either just leave you for somebody else or they just abandon the family, abandon the kids. They just point blank period get rid of you. That's what the narcissistic discard is. Um, but this is a discard that a lot of people don't talk about. You you won't see a lot of literature on this. You won't see a lot of you know videos and things on this discard. It's the discard when the narcissist forces you to discard them. That's right. You, you just hear me. There is a narcissistic discard where a narcissist or toxic person. I know I know everybody's not a narcissist, y'all. Where the narcissist or toxic person treats you so badly, puts you down so much, just just becomes uh, like you can't live with this person you can't live around this person you can't be with this person and they force you to discard them and then when you discard them they immediately move on to someone else it's just like quickly like how did they how, how hey, i broke up with them and now they are in a relationship two weeks after we've broken up three weeks after we've broken up they, he he or she is already engaged to somebody else it's like you know it's like i never existed it's like my family never existed it's like my kids never exist, existed to this person you know and a lot of, like I said, in this discard right here is like protection. It's like a built-in innate behavior, y'all. It's not like, it, it, it's like, you know, sometimes the narcissist does not have the strength. You know, I, I know a lot of times the narcissist does not have the strength or the courage or the, you know, just ability to break up with you. They are just weak. Like, they just won't leave you. They just can't leave you. So they try to, they try to make it, the environment around them so uninhabitable so treacherous so tough to deal with that you just be like i'm i'm done i'm fed up it's over get out let's break up let's get divorced let's do this yeah let's go our separate ways and things like that so you discard them you are pretty much giving them you know free freedom to go out here and you know have this excuse right here hey look they can, put the, they can post this on facebook they can tell all your, your mutual friends they can tell your family members and things like that hey look I tried my hardest to make it work. I really did. I tried my hardest to make it work with this person. Like we, I fought, I, I bit, I fought, I scratched, I clawed, and I, and I did everything that I could do, but it wasn't enough. They still broke up with me. They still discarded me. I try to, I, I can only try my best. I can only give 100% of who I am to someone for so long. And then they still, it's still not enough. And they discarded me. Now, guess what? The narcissist looks like a victim. So now when a narcissist moves on really, really quickly, they have that front end excuse right there. Like, hey, look, I didn't break up with them. They broke up with me. I tried to make it work with them, but it wasn't enough. It didn't work out. You know, so now is that not true, though? Did you not break up with the narcissist? Did you not discard the narcissist? Did you not set the narcissist free? So there's some truth to it. And there's just enough truth to it to, you know, but you know, the real, but you know, the real story. There, there's there's truth to it. But uh there's enough truth to it, but um, talk about mind with Blair. I got a text message. There's enough truth to it to make you go crazy because you know the actual truth. You know the environment that y'all lived in. You know the environment that y'all were co-parenting in, that y'all were cohabiting in, cohabitating in. You know all of that stuff. You know the truth, and you can't. But the truth is, you did discard the narcissist, and they will. They uh, they're gonna stand on that. And guess what they can do? They can use that information. And the the, the real, real terrible narcissist, the 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 evil sociopathic psychopathic narcissist they'll use that information to start manip manipulating your kids with hey look it'll sound something like this i'm I mean, look y'all i'm going to talk from the male perspective because i am a man you know 
So this, I know women can be narcissists. I actually have uh, a female uh, ASPD, antisocial personality disorder. Woman coming out here tomorrow, going live with me tomorrow. So I know women can be narcissists, but I talk from the male perspective because I am a man. You know, he, him pronouns for me. Um, so it can go, it would go something like this when the narcissist is talking, when the, the evil narcissist is talking to the kids. They'll say something like, hey, look, daddy tried to make it work, but you know what? No matter how much daddy fought, no matter how much daddy tried to make mommy happy, no matter how much daddy cried and begged and pleaded for mommy to treat him better, she still broke up with me. The reason we're not a family is because mommy decided that we did not need to be a family anymore and that daddy was not worthy enough. So it's not my fault we're not together, okay, kids? Mwah, I love you. See how terrible and evil that is? And their kids will go home and tell you that, or they'll start holding grudges against you. That's why you have to stand in your truth. When the kids say stuff like that, you know, a lot of times kids, or the kids are young and are too young to realize what's going on. But sometimes they're in that, that prime, that very manipulative age, about 6 to 10, 11 years old, when they hear stuff like that and they might actually believe it. So you need to stand in your truth when you're dealing with issues like that. Because I'm telling you, it, it, I'm telling you, it happens. I've seen it happen. I'm doing I'm doing one on ones with people, and I tell them about this, this about this discard, and they and they just like it blows their mind. It's like, oh my god, that's what happened. Like the, he he literally made me discard him. I could not live with this person, and then he moved on, and then like he got with somebody else so quickly, and I was just like, did, was, and I was asking myself like, was this already planned? Did you already plan to be with this person? Did you this, is this what it was? And guess what, y'all? In situations like this, a line narcissist that already has somebody else on the side, they can tell that person on the side, hey, look. We broke up. They broke up with me. So I'm free. I'm single. Got you. And now you reach out to the new supply, trying to talk to the new supply about what happened and try how they uh, how they treated you and all this other stuff. And the new supply doesn't believe you. They don't believe you because did you not break up with the narcissist? Is that part not true? So, yes, that part is true. But like I said, the narcissist a lot of times have gotten, gotten to the new supply's head and have already turned them against you. I did... Um, I did a Wizio video for a lady uh, yesterday, and she said that um, she's been divorced for five years and co-parenting for five years, like with a narcissist. He got remarried six months after she discarded him. Like she, he, he got so crazy to the point, he, he drove her crazy enough to the point where she discarded him. And he got married like almost immediately after, within six months of their divorce. He are, he was already married to somebody new, and the new wife has still not met the uh, the ex-wife. Wants to come pick wants to come pick this. Uh, pick their kids up and uh, pick this, pick her new step kids up and take them to her house but she won't allow it she's like no I'm not allowing this person to come get my kids I haven't met them in five years it's been five years and I, she's like I don't understand why this person doesn't want to meet me and I tell them I'm like look even though you discarded that narcissist your, your possible narcissistic ex you probably you, you, even though you possibly discarded him he probably didn't put it in her head into the next person's head that you're that you're you know you're not well in the head like you, that you're uh quote unquote crazy my ex is my ex-wife is crazy you know that's why i want you talking to her i don't need you talking to her and having her putting stuff into your head and turn, turning you against me i don't want you to do that like so don't, don't even talk to her like we can make this co-parenting thing work you don't even have to talk to her and that's the joys of it because like if you don't have to talk to her then we you know we can still do our thing we can still be a couple and stuff like that and make everything work like we can actually do all of that stuff right there you know so it gets to that point right there where we you know you get caught up with the narcissist and you trying to reach out to the next person not even in a bad way you just want to meet them because that person is going to be watching your kids or have you know your, your kids are going to that person's house and you don't know who they are you don't know anything about them because they refuse to meet you because that your narcissistic ex has put it into their head that you are unfit unwell and you are spread unnecessary rumors about about the narcissist so yeah it does get out it does get crazy it does get for real it does get serious we were dealing with like narcissists after the discard, especially like I said, and it's it's crazy because like you don't want to be in a toxic situation for too long because it start messing with your brain. It literally start messing with your brain, and like the narcissists, they know they they know they're ready to move on. They just don't have the strength. They know that you're unhappy. They the nar the nar and blah 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 blah. The narcissist knows that they are unhappy as well. So, and, but they don't have the strength to leave. They're scared to leave. They're scared to you know they don't want to be the one to pull the trigger. And you pull the trigger. You're like, I'm done. Bye. And they, that narcissist is like, yes, finally. Move on really, really quick. And then you, you're you like, and you're sitting there like, wait, was this already pre-planned? And you're already with somebody else. Like, you're still, you know, in the relationship. You're still, 
sitting there, sitting there, and a lot of times you're mourning the relationship. You're like you're sitting there, you're sitting right there, and you're mourning the act, the loss of the relationship, the end of the relationship. They while well, they hop into a new relationship, and then and from the outside looking in, that new relationship looks extremely happy, looks extremely you no know, not toxic. It looks like it looks like the beginning of your relationship, don't it? A lot of times that new relationship looks, looks like the beginning of your relationship. The narcissist is over there giving that person everything that you wanted. Um, Cause if like if you're thinking like if that narcissist would have just gave me everything everything that he's given to to them, we would still be together. And but that's exactly why they didn't give it to you because you would still be together. That person didn't want to be with you anymore for whatever reason. You might y'all might have just outgrown each other. If that happens, they might just be treating you terribly. You know what I mean? They might be cheating already. You might have caught them cheating, so you don't trust them anymore. But you know what I mean? There's a lot of different reasons, and the boy, they, but like the reasons are typically good reasons for you to leave that person, and you to to move on, and for you to you know try to try, try to take a shot at happiness outside of this relationship. But like you're a lot of times, like I said, when you break up with them, like you tell it, like it's time for you to get out. Just go. I'm done. I'm done. They get out. Two weeks later, they come out on Facebook with a new relationship. You know, a new relationship they they don't pop up overnight like that. So the new supply is never really new. They've already they've already been around. It's like, he, you know how hard it is for me, even for somebody like you know, you know, unless you're rich and famous, or whatever, it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be hard for you to go here, hop in a relationship. But like an average person, it it'd be difficult to come out here and pop out with a girlfriend in three days. You know, two days. Like, give me two, give me give me a week. Let me see if I can do it. You know what I mean? I think one, well, I think one of my uh, videos coming up next. I uh, did a one on one with a lady yesterday. I told her I was gonna like, I was gonna like sit sit right here. On my computer, on uh, filming the video and the podcast, and and create a you know I'm gonna get I'm gonna act, I'm gonna clear it with my wife so she knows about it. I'm gonna create a Tinder profile that's just trying to see you what a diag how a diagnosed narcissist would navigate Tinder and what he would do. You know what I mean? What I what I would be looking for on there. You know? Uh, I'm thinking about doing that. So put in like, if you if you watch it all the way through, put this in the comment section. If you want me, to, you think that'll be an interesting video? Because I. If not, I'm just going to do a video about social media, social media, and the uh, being the narcissist playground and things like that. So yeah, so y'all, and when you get this, if you had to dis discard the narcissist, do not be surprised if the narcissist moves on very, very quickly to another person and gets into a relationship very, very quickly. You know, because they already might have already been playing. They might have already been planning to be in a new relationship, and they just didn't want. They either didn't have the strength to leave you, or they. Uh, Wanted to have their excuse to, you know, to look good in public, to, to cover themselves in public. Like, hey, look, I tried my hardest. I tried my hardest and I got discarded. I got kicked out the house. What do you expect me to do? I'm going to sit on my hands and beg and plead. No, I ain't going to do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go somewhere where I'm wanted. Whole time, cheating, doing all this other, man. I'm telling you, the narcissistic mind is a wild, wild thing. And I say, I know, I know the mindset because it's my mindset, y'all. It's literally my mindset. And I think people, people, be saying like, "Hey, you're you're a recovering narcissist." I, I've never ever used the word recovering. I've ever, I've never ever used the word that I'm healing or getting better. I've always said that I am a narcissist in therapy, and that's literally all I say. I'm still 100% a narcissist. I still 100% have narcissistic personality disorder. It just this, the, the intense psychotherapy for the last almost four years has helped me kind of just like change my behaviors a little bit, you know, to live a healthy, better life. And I'm thinking about getting my wife to do a, a video with me here pretty soon where we just know we're probably going to go live with her and y'all do, y'all want her on here so much. Y'all, this is my platform. You want my wife on here. No, I'm just joking. She's, um, you know, she's the, the catalyst to all of this stuff, you know, and it used to be hard for me to say that type of stuff. It used to be hard for me to say when people used to say, Hey, your wife made your, uh, um, oh my goodness, your wife, made you a better person so i'm just like yeah no yeah. i used to hate saying that but like now like she was the catalyst to me becoming a better person because like, i had to put the work in time and stuff in there like that but you know she's been here but anyway y'all thank you all so much for tuning into this video i know i started rambling a little bit at the end but i'm very very passionate about this stuff i'm very very passionate about what i do so if you want a one-on-one -on -one, you know the link is in my bio on my tiktok the link is in my bio on my instagram and it's in every description of every video i do um in this series of the narcissist code but the uh, book coming soon y'all i'm just getting started on this book just gotta get it sit down hammer it out but anyways y'all thank y'all so much i'm truly truly appreciative of everything um from y'all i love y'all as much as a narcissist can love, can a narcissist love? That's one of my questions I answered in a previous video. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. Peace.